Hello again everybody, back with another video. This one I'm calling the Great UK Heatwave Con for July 2022. And in July 2022 we had an event where for two days the temperatures got late 30s for a lot of people and uh, London it managed to get into the 40s and of course climate disaster it's all our fault for uh, trying to stay warm in the winter driving our cars around it's everybody's fault because it's climate change and within climate change you have inferred man-made global warming and they have come moved away from that but it's they've kind of linked the two terms uh, so i'd like to have a look at this great UK heatwave and show what a complete con trick it really is and how biased and how much propaganda came through the media on this one to push obviously the so-called green net zero agenda so um, just out of interest the UK was the first country to declare a climate change emergency and they did it early May 2019 so you got all the photos of these uh, kind of controlled um, movements or pushing the green agenda and of course the everybody's seen this crimson blood red you know spelling disaster heat now look at this London 40 Manchester I recorded I think 34 one day and 35 the next and we will look at Manchester temperatures by using the weather station at Manchester Airport and we'll look at London temperatures using the weather station at uh, London City Airport just two I live 15 miles as the crow flies in a straight line from Manchester Airport and around 24 miles from the centre of Manchester. So that is 25 kilometres to the airport and 38 kilometres to Manchester Centre. So I'm kind of looking at the, what I feel and what I see of the so-called climate change. And you'll probably see it isn't anything because it's a complete hoax. But let's move on. Um, England braces for 40 degrees C temperatures as experts warn thousands could die thousands yeah I think the deaths were mainly people drowning from going swimming where they shouldn't and uh, the government triggered the first ever national emergency heat red alert with a record 40 degrees C or 104 Fahrenheit temperatures forecast for the South East England on the Tuesday. And here's one from our lovely uh, unbiased non-propaganda mirror. Extreme heat. These were the matrix signs on the road. Plan your journey. Carry water again. Thousands could die. And also... Londoners were warned not to travel on the Monday or the Tuesday due to extreme heat. So don't travel, stay at home. Where have we heard that before? From the convicts, of course. And um, we also have uh, these weather forecasts with these extreme heat warnings as well. National emergency declared after UK's first red extreme heat warning. And of course, everybody was going to spontaneously combust because that's what happens in the UK when the temperatures get into the late 30s people and everything just spontaneously combust that's why everybody flies away from the dreadful weather we normally get in the UK to find the sun abroad but we never kind of have all these warnings in the aeroplane when we get on you know warning extreme heat be careful but let's take a look now at a, a couple of videos just to give you the flavour of the 
propaganda and the pushing of the green net zero agenda, which is all part, of course, of changing everything with a great reset. Uh, it's hot and it's getting hotter. How's London coping? Well, look, we are, uh, as a global city, we suffer from what's called the uh, urban heat island effect, which means it's hotter in London uh, than other parts of the country, and it feels hotter as uh, well. The Met Office, for the first time in its history, issued the Level 4 red warning, and the Chief Medical Officer advised it's not just uh, the, the elderly and those who are vulnerable who will suffer the effects of this uh, excessive heat, but all of us. And so, so far, uh, things are running OK in our city because people are doing the right thing. Uh, they're only using public transport if it's essential for them to do so. Uh, they're not ringing 999 unless it's an emergency, and it's really important. We do what we can today and tomorrow to make sure we get through this uh, healthy well and uh, as well as we can be. We should be doing better, though, shouldn't we? We hear about schools potentially closing, uh, trains not running. It's summer, it gets hot, we should be prepared. This is so scripted. He has just basically laid down the foundations for this Sadiq to say it's not normal. You just listen to what's coming up. Well, that's the classic mistake to make. This is not normal temperatures for a summer in our city and our country. Uh, records are going to be broken uh, this year. Uh, 40 degrees is not normal. It's one of the consequences, by the way, of uh, climate change. It's quite beggar's belief, by the way. None of those running to be the next prime minister seem to care about this issue. Uh, we would have these temperatures uh, of, you know, north of 35 degrees uh, one, once every 300 years in previous decades. Now it's once every three years. And that's why we have to adapt now, because I'm afraid this uh, may become the uh, norm rather than the exception. But we aren't ready for these temperatures. We aren't prepared. We're not used to them. And that's why people should be careful. You're not on holiday now. Uh, you're in this country. These temperatures are excessive. Please be careful. Carry water if you're out and about. Change your normal routines. Don't go out between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m., the hottest parts of the day. And the, the other problem we have is it stays, hot in the, it stays hot in the evenings as well. So you don't cool off in the evenings. That's why it's really important not to fall for the sunshine outside your window if you've got a cool home. Think about staying indoors. Uh, given that we could well see days like this uh, appearing more frequently, uh, what is London doing? What, what are you doing to make sure that facilities in the capital, to make sure that transport in the capital will be able to cope in future? So the good news is that the new stuff we're building, so the new Elizabeth Line air condition, uh, new buildings we're building have cooling systems, uh, rely upon renewable energies, uh, you know, are insulated and uh, so forth. The key challenge is to retrofit, in other words, adapt the buildings we already have, adapt the public transport we already have. And we're trying to work with the government to make sure the new buses are not just fully electric, uh, but are cooler in the summer, are warm in the winter. But we've got to adapt our working practices because of these temperatures. They're not normal, and so we can't rely upon business as usual. Uh, we've got two days of temperatures at or above 40 degrees. Never before have we had that in our country. The Met Office has never before issued the Level 4 uh, red warning. Never before have you got uh, medical experts advising all of us, not just the elderly uh, and vulnerable, to be co cognizant, be aware, uh, take steps to avoid getting unwell. These are exceptional circumstances which, which require exceptional measures. Now, the BBC's weather team has been at the forefront of our coverage of the heat waves across Europe and the ongoing climate crisis, but this has led to unprecedented levels of personal abuse and online trolling, as some people have accused them of hysteria and promoting climate change propaganda. Uh, well, I'm joined now by one of our weather presenters, Matt Taylor. Matt, really sorry that you and everybody's had to go through this. Um, it, it, I, I read uh, an interview with you in one of the papers this morning, and I know it's, it has upset you. Um, but does it baffle you that people still feel you're lying? It's propaganda. Climate change isn't happening. Uh, it does to a certain extent. The vast scientific community are saying what we're seeing. It's the world is warming. But there's, in this world of social media now, uh, false information can be spread quite quickly, latched upon, reshared, and it just seems to fall into two counts of either those who think it's all a lie, it's all a hoax, and then the others who've got this almost rose-tinted vision of what the weather was like. Is it getting worse? Because we've been talking about climate change for a long time now. Uh, it certainly has. I think with 
what we saw last week, because the heat we saw in the UK was so unprecedented, climate change is actually forced to the forefront and including in the weather forecasts, which we try and bring all the pictures, all the facts together and let people to try and realise what's going on in the bigger picture. So let's move on. What's behind all this climate change worsened Britain's heat wave? Scientists find. So they found that it caused that climate change made deadly UK heat wave at least 10 times likelier. So 10 times more likely to occur. And you see a bit of smoke here. We'll look at the wildfires that happened around London. So here we've got uh, London wakes up to the realities of heat wave hell as its European neighbours battle widespread wildfires. So there's the ring of fire around London and apparently when the temperatures get above 35, everything starts to burn. What a pile of bollocks. These fires were clearly started deliberately to put fuel to the fire of the fear of climate change and man-made global warming. Now we will play this CBS News video because you'll just see how bad they are pushing this thing. But just out of interest, and I'm not putting much code into this thing, but wildfires is a term they use a lot. It's actually 105 in English Ordinal, but 33 for Masonry in Chaldean. And this 105 is quite a significant number because 911, 911, spelt out is 105 in English Ordinal. And 666 is 105 in full reduction in Pythagorean. And of course, there's that 105 link into this one. So they are keen on that word, very keen. But let's take a look at the video. So we are continuing to follow fires in Europe. They are happening in multiple countries and in some places, they're, it's the worst they've seen in decades. Mm -hmm. So Remy and Innocencio has that story. Ten rare wildfires burned and billowed across London. Yes, the British capital as the London Fire Brigade, stretched thin and stressed out, saw its busiest day since World War II. The same day, the country shattered the record for its hottest day in known history. The UK has today recorded its highest ever temperature, 40.3 degrees Celsius. That's over 104 degrees Fahrenheit, sparking already parched grasses. Dee Enkube and her family fled their burning neighborhood, leaving everything behind. Where was the last time you think you even saw anything like this? In the movies. Never seen it any in real life, only on TV. Until now. If you told me I was in Southern California with wildfires by the highway, bone dry vegetation and temps hitting 100 degrees, I might believe you. But this, this is London and people are shocked. This is it, right? This is uh, the climate change that we've been promised by scientists. Can we still call the United Kingdom a cold country? Absolutely not. This level of extreme weather is uh, life-threatening, and we really want to make sure that people are not under any illusion that this is serious and this is here to stay for the foreseeable future. So, clearly, you know, it's all down to climate change and man-made global warming and using all those fossil fuels that we shouldn't use. And this is looking again at pushing the propaganda even more. 40 degrees C heat waves could happen every few years because of climate change. In the UK, we can have climate change from one day to the next, but they've this CC for 33 here, this now they've replaced in people's psyche or sheeple psyche, not mine, to think about man-made global warming and CO2. So heat waves are becoming longer, more frequent and more intense as a result of climate change. And we'll check this out. Records for the highest UK temperatures have been set three times already 
in the 21st century and could continue to do so as global warming takes its toll. There we go, there's the propaganda. So, you know, the big culprit, of course, is atmospheric carbon dioxide. And this is a graph that's from 1960 to 2021 showing how the CO2 in parts per million, and we'll look at this a little bit later and how significant that is, has risen and is accelerating. So we've been building windmills for years, solar energy, and it's still going up. So what do they propose to do to stop it? You ask me, but uh, probably stop everybody doing anything, put us all back into mud huts, let us all die. Who knows? But uh, that's kind of the basis. Now, it's interesting we talk about heat waves in the UK, but the Met Office defines, and the Met Office is probably the biggest propaganda centre. It's very, very closely linked with the British bullshit corporation, the BBC. The Met Office defines a heat wave as when a location records a period of at least three consecutive days with the daily maximum temperatures meeting or exceeding the heat wave temperature threshold. And these thresholds vary by UK county, so where you are in the UK. Generally, the southeast is the hottest, and as you go further north, it gets cooler. So for Manchester, the heat wave threshold temperature is defined as 25 degrees. So this is a really useful website. You used to be able to go onto the Met Office and you used to be able to find all kinds of weather data. Now all you can find is propaganda and you've got to sign up for some kind of access to get to the weather records. Obviously they don't want people looking at them. But this uh, www.wonderground.com uh, you can basically look up weather stations in the UK or anywhere else in the world and you can select the current weather or you can select history so for example on this one I selected um, July weather for 2022 and the weather station here is Manchester Airport station this wasn't quite at the end of the month when I downloaded this, but the data I will show is for the full month. And you can get things like maximum temperature, average temperature, minimum temperature for the whole month. So I'm keen on looking at average temperatures rather than extremes because the average gives you an idea if it's really getting warmer or not, and it's just not a, a, some kind of fluke weather event. So that one was for Manchester Airport and I've also used uh, London City Airport for London's weather. So you can see the various temperatures. Again, I printed this out before the end of the month, but the data I will discuss later will be from the, for the full month. Okay, so this is uh, Manchester and this is June 2022 and this is July 2022. So what we have here is our 25 degree uh, threshold and here we've got two peaks that go above the 25. So in June on the 17th it reached 28 and on the 23rd it reached 27. So these aren't heat waves because they haven't lasted three years. So let's look at the um, July. You can see it goes to the end of the month now. And basically there's our 25. And we've got a point here, here and here. And then it plummets down and starts raining and he's cool again. So here we had a three day heat wave in July 2022. So as you can see, where I live, you're just longing for, uh, there was another peak here and here, but this was just for two days. So that wasn't a heat wave. You're just longing for warm, sunny weather. And when it happens, you've got all the nonsense of climate change. But 
not really <laughs> that much of a month to write home about. So if we looked at 2006, which was a lot hotter for a longer, well, it was warmer for a longer period of time. So this is 2006 for the month. We've got points here, there. So there we've got a six day heat wave. And here, bear in mind, you know, we're, we're looking here at uh, 16 years earlier. Look at this. Yeah. So in 2006, we didn't have three days. We had two heat waves. One was six days and one was 14 days. That's much, much more of a longer heat wave than the one we just had. And what was it they were saying? Heat waves are going to be more extreme and last longer and be more frequent. Not for this July, they weren't. And uh, if we look at London, where all the focus has been, this has only had two short heat waves this year to date. It had zero in June. You can look that up if you want, but I'll tell you that. But if you look here, um, we've got heat waves here. And those heat waves lasted for four days and three days. Obviously, these are the so-called extremes, the 18th and 19th. So London had a four day and a three day heat wave. That's all. If we look like we did with Manchester at 2006, here's our trace. There's our 28 degree threshold. And here's our heat wave that we had then. So here we've had th three heat waves of three days, seven days and five days. So is this an exceptional month compared to this? I, I would say not. As I say, this is 16 years later and CO2 levels have been rising and rising. So what did they say in the Met Office about the 2006 record breaking heat and sunshine? It compared it here, look, uh, here's 2006 against the 20 warm, warmest months. And this was a record. And the reason for the weather was the numerous warm sunny days were associated with anomalously high pressure over northern Europe and a persistent southerly airstream over the UK. Not one word about it being climate change or man-made global warming. And this on average was warmer and we'll see that when we look at the graphs. So again, I'll say, what about climate change there? We didn't have all the propaganda back in 2006, but now we have it. So let's have a look at history, temperature data, I should say historic temperature data for Manchester and London. So these are monthly averages. So let's have a look at what's happened to CO2 levels. So I've taken this from that graph we saw before. We've gone from 372 to 416. So it's increased by 44 ppm in 20 years, which is a 12% increase. So it's been going up like mad. And we would expect, based on all the propaganda we're hearing, that uh, the, the temperatures will be going up and up for average months as years progress. So this is the temperature record for the Manchester station, Manchester airport weather station. And this is for May. So we can see here um, the average lines here, the blue, pretty cold, 11.9 degrees centigrade. And the trend line from Excel is just showing basically a very fractional rise. But bear in mind the scatter is so great that the trend line doesn't mean a great deal. And the trend line works in Excel by basically making sure that the areas above the line here 
and the areas below the line equal each other to give you trends. So no real trend, a pretty much a flat line there. But uh, so obviously the government were watching all the weather forecasts and looking at the averages and they declared a climate emergency back in 2009 for the month of May. So there we go, a climate emergency. It's quite a joke. And if we look at June, very, very similar in terms, obviously we're getting warmer and you'll see the difference between Manchester and London is quite significant. It's about two degrees for May and three degrees hotter for June, July and August on average in London compared to Manchester, this being Manchester Airport on this one. So you can see here, slight increase in the trend line for June, the average 14.9 degrees, but nothing to write home about there, nothing you could really see with that level of spread. Now, if we go to uh, July, so here we've got uh, the latest July and the average temperatures and the trend line's going up and it's going up just over one degree centigrade and the average being 16.5. Okay, so slight increase, but would you say that that was significant based on that scatter? Scientifically, I would say not. Uh, but interesting that if we look at this month, we have three previous months, 2006, 2013 and 2018, that were significantly warmer than this July, even though all the hype has focused here. And all this extra hype obviously happens after COVID, so it's all building up for whatever their agenda is. I'm just looking at how significant this is. So that's not a significant month by any stretch of the imagination. So the absolute temperature increase, 289 to 290, which is 0.35%. And CO2 levels have gone up 12%. And the reason we talk absolute is you can't really start at zero centigrade because that has heat value as well. You have to go to absolute zero and talk about Kelvin. So here's Manchester for August. And actually, if you looked at this, you can't read a lot in because it tends to be all over the place. But the average is 16 and the trend line is down. So let's move to London City Airport. So you can see May. We are significantly warmer, a couple of degrees warmer here. And here's our trend line, which is virtually the same as the flat average. So very little change uh, with that. Here's the links if you want to check this data up. So this is the average for May in London. And don't forget the UK declared a climate change emergency here. Yeah, so obviously they didn't look at that data. And uh, here's June. So we've got a fall here. Again, the scatter is so great. And bear in mind that the weather in the world is a chaotic system. It has so many different variables. But when they talk about man-made global warming, they take the sun's heat as constant and they relate it to CO2 concentration and use some kind of uh, modeling computer program like they did with Convid basically to come up with whatever they want to come up with. So the average here for June 17.4 is about three degrees warmer than uh, Manchester and you can see June was actually cooling slightly so was May. We go to July we get a similar result to Manchester we get about one degree C uh, Celsius increase Average is 19.5, but with this scatter, can you draw a lot into that? Um, it looks pretty much flat line to me. Um, and if we look for London, here's our month when they were building up all the rhetoric, but it had a much warmer, significantly warmer July in 2018 
and a much more significant warmer July in 2006. So where is this global warming? Again, I've already covered that. So if we look now at the temperature record for London for August, obviously for August we haven't got 2022 because we haven't finished it yet. Uh, but I've just done um, the 19 years from 2002 to 20 and we've got a drop. So overall, we've got drops for May, June and August and increase in July. So again, where is all our global warming? So where has all our man-made global warming gone? I wouldn't mind some where I live. So we've had a climate change emergency in the UK for three years, so it must be somewhere. Why else would a government not plunge us into fuel poverty and push a ridiculous net zero policy? Why are the unseen world leaders deliberately driving up the price of fossil fuels through their uh, fake wars and their uh, green agenda and building expensive windmills and solar panels that don't work when the sun's not out and the wind doesn't blow? But putting all this into context, the UK contributes just 1% to world one man-made CO2 levels and 0.03% to the total world CO2 emissions because man-made emissions are 3%, the rest 97% are natural. So we are plunging people into fuel poverty with all kinds of ridiculous green agendas when the contribution from the UK to the CO2 emissions is 0.03%. It makes no sense. Well, none of it does. Even the global warming theory to me makes no sense. And put that into perspective, here's our United Kingdom and there's our portion of man made and china probably every year increases its output more than the uk has in total so completely makes no sense even using their figures and also bear in mind that 95 percent of the so-called greenhouse effect is caused by water vapor and not co2 but uh here's our uh Greenhouse gas concentrations reach another high. So this is plotting it over years. This is a CO2. So clearly, let's get rid of dependable, what was cheap and abundant energy, and let's push to rationing and prohibiting its use. Rationing probably via the price we have to pay for it, and there will be some prohibition of its use too. So this is CO2, but they're also pushing uh, nitrous oxide or N2O. Um, so about 60% of this is man-made and 40% is, is natural. And this is through biomass burning, fertilizer use and various industrial processes. So what are they reducing for this? They're reducing farming introducing food rationing effectively through pricing and availability but look how they quote it they quote it as 331 parts per billion so they're trying to get this number up by talking about parts per thousand million this is actually 0 0.331 parts per million which is basically a natscock air worth yeah so here we've got isn't it amazing that we've got co2 where they can hit us with fuel issues we've got nitrous oxide that they can hit us through farming regulations and uh, the next one of course is methane so again look at the way they say 1900 parts per billion again which is 1.9 parts per million and 60 percent is attributed to human sources 
So we are contributing 60% of 1.9 parts per million, which is next to nothing. So let's bring in really fart and burp taxes for livestock, especially cows that burp a lot, burp methane. Better still, let's get rid of livestock for general public and get them to eat insects instead and vegetables. So you can see what all the themes here are. Now what I want to do is put that into perspective here. So here we've got 9,600 white dots. Take my word for it, that's how many are there. Don't try and count them, you'll be there forever. And there's 420 parts per million of CO2. So on that basis, that works out to four red dots of CO2 that are causing all the issues. So you probably can see a couple. There are red dots with a yellow circle around them, but I'll point out where they are. So this is what we are basically going to put people into poverty, take away their standards of living for this. How possibly can those four, that amount of CO2 cause an issue in the atmosphere. Well, he can't because it's bollocks, isn't it? But uh, that's CO2. Now, if we want to look at um, methane, there's two parts per million. That means in 9,600 white dots, there's going to be 0 0.02 red dots for 2 ppm methane or CH4. That is one fiftieth of a white dot. So can you see it there? Probably not. I'll show you where it is. It's right in there. You might be able to see it now, but let's expand it. So there's our dot that's a fiftieth of the size of this. So this is what they want to put masks onto cows and they want to call cows and stop you eating meat because that is going to cause global warming in all this when you put it into that perspective it just makes sense doesn't it it's just, well, just a complete pile of shite yeah bullshite so i'm not going to try and show the 0 0.331 ppm of uh, nitrous oxide because that would give us a dot that's one three hundredth of a white dot just looking at this, does it make sense to you, any of this? The nonsense that they're spouting? Okay, so uh, a little bit more. I said I wouldn't do too much code, but uh, the world is getting measurably closer to a 1.5 degree threshold. All of this 1.5 degree, so I thought I'd have a look. There's our 1.5 degrees here, look. They're talking about Celsius, but 1.5 degrees gives us this 42 number in full reduction, which brings sixes and sevens together. Six times seven is 42. Six times six for 36 plus six gives 42, and seven times seven for 49 minus seven gives 42. And look what we've got in Chaldean numerology. We have 33 for masonry. So full reduction is Pythagorean numerology. Very interesting there that it would be coded. And um, this is looking at how long they've known about the greenhouse effect. It was 1824 when Joseph Fourier calculated the earth would be much colder if it had no atmosphere. Yeah? And the natural greenhouse effect of the atmosphere don't know how you would measure it if it didn't have any atmosphere because it would be pretty cold. Um, and if it didn't have that atmosphere, it would be about 60 degrees Fahrenheit less or 33 degrees Celsius. So here's the link to that uh, if article if you want to watch it. So I will just do this last slide now. And of uh, course, one of the big effects of global warming, as we're told, is sea levels will rise and drown us all. So I will say, where is the sea level rise? Show me where the sea has risen. I don't want to see islands where there's been erosion by waves 
and it washing sand away. I want to see sea level rise. So this is an interesting one because here is Rhodestown Harbour in 1911. And here is Rhodestown Harbour in 2017. So we've got 106 years between them. There's a slight difference in the angle, but I'll put some guidelines to show you that the image is correctly signed. So you can see everything is at exactly the same height and same size. And look what we've got here. This is a slightly different angle to this, but I've put the, the guide on here. It's exactly the same. The sea level has not changed here in 106 years. And you can find examples all around the world. You may know them yourselves, um, but the sea level, if it's rising, is fractional. It's nothing like they've talked about. And all the celebrities and all these people wouldn't be spending millions and millions buying houses by the coast if they actually believed in their own nonsense, which they don't. So that's all I've got to say for now. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening and goodbye.